So let's say that we have a gradient vector field that's given by f of x, y, z is equal to y plus 3yz squared in the first component function, x plus 3xz squared in the second component function, and 6xyz minus 2 in the third component function. So our job is to find the potential function. Working backwards, where did this come from? So recall that our potential function, our gradient of, wait, our potential function phi, the gradient of that is equal to this function. The gradient of phi is equal to f. And so what does that tell us piece by piece? That tells us that the partial derivative of phi with respect to x is going to be equal to this first term. So I'll write that down. d phi dx is equal to our first term y plus 3yz squared. Now, working from what we saw before, Oh, maybe I should have pointed out that this one has three variables instead of just two. You guys can handle that. It's, it's going to be the same process, only a little bit more complicated. Um, so my first component function is equal to this. My second component function, the partial derivative of v with respect to y, is going to be equal to this next chunk, x plus 3xz squared. And our third component function, our partial derivative of phi with respect to z is going to be equal to 6xyz minus 2. Oh, I might have to rewrite that because I might run out of room. So what do we do? Working backwards, it means that we're anti-differentiating. So if I know my partial with respect to x is equal to this, I'm going to take my anti-derivative. I'm going to take the integral of this with respect to x. So when I take the integral of this with respect to x, it means that I'm treating y's and z's as constants in this case. So integrating here, I see that I'm going to end up with xy. I'm going to end up with 3xyz squared. And I'm also going to end up with a constant. But notice, I'm treating both y's and z's as constants in this. So my constant in this case is going to be a constant that could include both fu a function of y and a function of z. And this is my first guess at what my phi looks like. Moving on to this chunk, and maybe I'll write it below so that we have a little more space. I'm going to anti-differentiate both sides, this time with respect to y. And I end up with the fact that my phi2 function is going to be treating x's and z's as constants. I end up with, maybe I'll write my work. I'm taking the integral of both sides with respect to y. That got really messy looking, but really it's not that messy. I'm treating this chunk as the function that I'm integrating with respect to y. I end up with xy plus 3xyz squared. I just wrote it in that order to keep it consistent, but my x's and my z's are all um, just constants in this case. Plus, because I anti-differentiated with an indefinite bound, I need to make sure I add my constant. And this constant treated x's and z's as constants. So when this I think of as a constant, it's actually a function of x's and z's. And then for this final chunk, this final chunk right here, again, I'm totally out of board space. I thought that I could do this really cleverly, but I'll write it down here. We see that our final phi function, I'll call it phi 3, it's going to be the antiderivative of this chunk with respect to z. So when I'm looking at this first term, I treat the x and the y as constants, and the antiderivative of z is going to be 1 half z squared. So 1 half times 6 becomes a 3. And I end up with 3xyz squared minus the antiderivative of 2 with respect to z gives me 2z plus my final constant. And I treated my y's and x's as constants, so I have this chunk. So let's see if we can put our phi1, our phi2, and our phi3 together to be able to come up with what our original function was. How do we put these together? It's important that we notice that these three functions are really all the same function. They're all the same function, it's just that we don't have all of the information to write out what this part of the function is that we know that our phi function has to include this term. Our phi function also has to include this term. And we just don't know what these final yz terms might look like. 
And if I compare across all of these terms, we see that we have this x, y, z term in every single one of our phi functions. And so we know that that is going to be in our overall phi function. Can you see at the bottom of the screen here? Uh, I'll write it up here. So my phi of x, y, z, I know it has the term 3x, y, z squared because that shows up in each of these. Additionally, I also know that I need the term x, y. x, y appears here, x, y appears here, and we notice that x, y doesn't appear in my phi 3 function, but it's because the x, y term was treated as a constant. It's a function of x and y, and so that's what's here. The C3 part actually is exactly this x, y term. And that takes care of all of most of these pieces, but I still don't know, are there terms that are functions of y and z? Are there terms that are functions of x and z? They would appear here in our z function, and we see that in this case, the only thing that's missing is our minus 2z, and we need to put that piece in. And this is the function that, it's not a function of both x's and z's, it's just a function of z's, but it's the term that is represented by those two constants in the phi 2 and the phi 1. So it means that our final chunk is negative 2z. I'm going to erase all this so that we have a little more space. And I want to check our work. So we just decided that if this is our gradient vector field f, that we would end up with a phi function that looked like this. Phi of x, y, z. Sorry, did I say it was a potential function? Phi of x, y, z is equal to 3xyz squared plus xy minus 2z. Again, because it's a potential function, it means that my outputs are not vectors. My outputs have to be something that are, is just a single r, a single number. If I plug in a point, I get out a single number. And let's check by taking the gradient. So when I take the gradient of v, what do I end up with? I look at the partial derivative of this with respect to x. That means that I end up with 3yz squared plus y. When I take my partial derivative with respect to y, I get 3xz squared plus x. And when I take my partial derivative with respect to z, I get 6xyz minus 2. And so, ta-da, it is the case that these two things match. So in closing, my final example, I want to ask myself, is it always the case that given some gradient field that I can always find a potential function for it? So let's say that I have some vector function that's given by, oh, actually this is just a two-variable function. f of xy is equal to xy comma x plus y. Can I work backwards and find a potential function? I just pick this one out sort of randomly. What's, what's its potential function? And it turns out, maybe I won't ruin it, but we'll, we'll work quickly to go backwards. Well, this means that I need to have the gradient of V be equal to xy and x plus y. So that means that my partial derivative of C with respect to x has to be equal to xy plus some constant that's a function of y. I also know that my partial derivative of phi with respect to y, oops, sorry, I missed a term. It has to be, I, I don't know what I was thinking. My partial derivative of this function with respect to x, yes, has to be xy. And my partial derivative with respect to y has to be x plus y, right? Because that's my definition of what a gradient function is. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what I was thinking. I was getting ahead of myself. Um, so now I'm going to anti-differentiate with respect to x, and I find out that my first phi one function would be 1 half x squared y, because I treat y as a constant, plus some constant function, c of y. And then anti-differentiating over here with respect to y, my phi 2 function, I end up with xy plus 1 half y squared 
plus some function of x. So looking at these two pieces, let's compare them so that we can put them together to get one big phi function. And we see that our big phi function would have to include the term 1 half x squared y. It would also have to include the term x y. This is just a function of y, so that we're okay there. 1 half y squared. And it doesn't appear that there's any function that's just of x. So this is a, a candidate, but watch out. My mixed terms, the terms that had both x's and y's in them, they don't actually line up. That, that here, I need to have these pieces, but I also need to have these pieces. And maybe it'll be really obvious when I go ahead and check by taking the gradient of this. I'm taking my derivative with respect to x. What do I end up with? My partial derivative with respect to x gives me xy plus y, and this term drops out. And my partial derivative with respect to y gives me 1 half x squared plus x plus y. So it doesn't match. What went wrong? Well, what went wrong is not every function is a gradient vector field. So it just turns out that most vector fields that we find aren't going to have potential functions. And this is an example of one of them that doesn't have a potential function. It's a really special property to be able to be a gradient vector field. And we're going to talk about some of those special properties when we get to 16.1. But I wanted to, to show this that when we tried to come up with our potential function, we found our guesses didn't work because there were too many pieces that are, we had too many chunks that were functions of x and y that didn't match one another. Thanks, that's all I have for today. <laughs>